Hey y'all and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're talking about the weekly astrology and we're going to do a collective tarot reading um, at the end. So welcome in at the time of this recording. It is Monday the 17th. It's the new moon in Cancer and I think it is the first day of the rest of the year because at the end of the year we'll have the full moon in Cancer just like yeah right at the end of December there. So what do you want to manifest in the next six months? What do you want to invest in, you know, in that large macro level of, uh, you know, working with the moon cycles and things like that? Cancer rules the fourth house. This is our home. It's our origin. So think about things that are pers deeply personal to you. Um, where you've been. This is a time to honor where you've been, how far you've come. It's time to get in touch with your emotions. That's going to be really important this week, and we'll talk about why um, and what emotions will might may come up for you, as well as it's a time to, in other ways, stand up for what you really believe in, and not just believe in, what is deeply personal and valuable to you, if you've been neglecting those things or thinking that something or somebody else is going to take care of those things and provide that sort of nurturance um, for you or that thing, that situation. Remember, North Node just moved into Aries. So we're all being called maybe to take a little bit more initiative in those areas with the new moon in Cancer. You can definitely direct that energy towards that home space, towards the heart space. This is the time to follow your intuition. If your intuition is guiding you to take action, plant new seeds so that you can be closer to achieving that which you desire, you are empowered to do so. All right, let's look at some of the other energies. Um, at the same time, we have the new moon, Mercury square Jupiter. This is ripe energy to change, quote unquote, change your story. Growth resides in how you have how you have been putting the pieces together. Growth resides in how you put the pieces together to center your needs. Mars is opposite Saturn. Look out for frustration. This is like middle of the week. Practice patience, self-discipline. Um, Sun, try Neptune. That's increase in sensitivity for sure. Also intuition. Um... Be aware of the story that, that you're telling yourself mentally here. You know, flex your ability to remain positive. We, you know how we can be our own worst enemy. Release, release, release. Confront and release inner compulsions that have been restraining you from achieving your inspirations. I think I meant to write aspirations. At the end of the week, Venus retrogrades in Leo... You know, Venus is beauty, love, things we find beautiful overall. In Leo, you know, Leo is very playful and passionate and also wants a lot of attention. So that's your sort of scale to understand, uh, you know, the extremes of Leo in the realm of um, the things that Venus rules, beauty and love, romance. So this is the, whatever it was, passionate, even theatrical romance. Um, to be honest, to me, I start to think about performative romance, performative, um, you know, Leo likes to be on a stage. And so when we are being playful, we may want, or maybe not want, up to you, right? Clarity about intentions. I think that's fine. You can decide what those boundaries are for you. I think it's just because of the added layers of possible anger or frustration that the, the challenging aspects of this week can bring, do what you can to take care of yourself. And this is why it's important. The new moon in Cancer is asking us to pay attention to our emotions for sure. It's a time to not be so serious, be playful, vibrancy, and, and, and you know... I just wrote life, but 
Leo is life. Leo is the sun energy. Leo is the heart space. And if there's anything I took away from retreat this past weekend, curated by um, Meta, dear friend Meta, who brought me along, I did my astrology workshop, it was great, thank you for asking, is that what is at the center of the heart? It is light. So for this Venus retrograde, which I believe lasts until the end of October, end of October or beginning of October. You can look it up or at least don't quote me because I don't have it in front of me. In any case, for the time that we are in retrograde in Venus, certain things may happen. For example, people return from the past or lessons repeat themselves. If it's not the same person, it's a different person, same lesson. Or somebody, you know, showing up a person or a situation entering your life to teach you a lesson about that which Leo rules. Playfulness, creativity, love, romance, passion. Um, also being seen. Like I said, Leo likes to be on a stage. Uh, prioritizes the self. We want to increase our level of our ability to handle positive egoism. Positive egoism is when we understand our worth um, so much so that we have, you know, this like a level of self-respect when enter when entering sort of any kind of um, relationship activity. We understand how to prioritize our time, how to be clear, how to be kind. Positive egoism. And finally, Mercury square Uranus on the 23rd, which is that Sunday. This is, you know, Uranus is the energy of surprises and changes, also innovation. And Mercury rules the third house of intellect, communication, and our daily patterns, you know, like the things that keep us regular or our habits. So maybe something unexpected happens, you know, and maybe not on Sunday, but in general, the, you know, the energies are on for a while. Maybe, you know, you let me know. Is this true? Does it happen for you? Something unexpected may occur. Maybe that throws you off your regular daily schedule. Maybe you're not able to do your routine, you know, your daily routine, your morning or evening routines. Or something happens that instills the value of routine for you. I believe that Mars in Virgo, which is a tra Mars transit, transited, transited. The term is ingressed, like when it moves into the next sign. Mars moved into Virgo last week. And if you remember a bit about what we said there was, it's a time to prioritize and move methodically. But Virgo is also kind of critical. It's the sign of assessment. So look out for maybe hypercriticism of self. Do you see how all of these energies are playing off of each other during this time? It's um, it's in a map in a web in my mind, and I don't I don't know if it's enough to list them for for it to seem clear and how it's coming out. I would really love to hear from you. Uh, what you think, how you, th how you can imagine this integrating into your personal life, because everybody's going to, for everybody's going to be different. So yeah, changes to daily routines, new or exciting things on the horizon, look out for distractions or feeling like you need to keep up. Leo says, savor, don't take miscommunication seriously, remain flexible and open minded remain flexible and open-minded let's do our reading uh -huh. so yeah I was on retreat over the weekend that was super fun I believe we'll do another one in the fall. 
if you want to learn more about that, you can just sign up for my emails, go to my website, theintuitivelens.com, sign up for the newsletter, bam, you're on the list. Let's get some tarot messages for the collective for this week regarding the new moon, regarding potential any frustrations, regarding passion, romance, and or self-confidence. Initiation, inspiration. These are the themes of the week. <sighs> wow, wish card underneath. Your wish is granted. This is also a card of comfort. Let's keep going. The tower. Yeah. So if there, this is for somebody who, if there is a sudden change for you because of that Uranus transit, it is a positive change. It may feel like things are falling apart. It may feel like things are in the way or you're not getting your way. But actually the universe is trying to deliver exactly what you want. What's happening actually, the moon underneath, this is, you know, the full moon. This is actually, you know, cancer energy, I'll say. You have cancer and Pluto energy showing up. The moon is about the unknown. So there's something unknown going, you know, will make itself known, I'll say. Or maybe there's something unknown that you really wish you would know. So there's an interesting, there's very, very many, um, many ways to read what this energy underneath is showing me. We have the world in reverse also. This is regarding something that was never finished. Something that wasn't finished. Maybe there, you know, I don't know if it's about closure or about a certain thing. Knight of Swords. You're going to get some information fast. Sudden. Suddenly something. I think this is, because the moon is showing up here, this has had a profound effect on your subconscious mind. So we'll look into the subconscious line to see what is there. I'll look out for that. We have the emperor in reverse. Six of pentacles. Yeah, six of pentacles. King of swords in reverse. Six of cups. Six of swords. That's three sixes. The Hangman in reverse, Knight of Cups in reverse, Queen of Pentacles in reverse, Ace of Swords in reverse, everything's in reverse. Wild. <laughs> um, next time I'll have my retrograde table in front of me, because I believe Neptune is in retrograde, right, in Pisces, so things may feel unclear. This may be the source of some frustration. Um... What I'm reading in the subconscious line, we'll start there because this is where some there might be some sort of sudden insight. Also, this Ace of Swords is showing here with that. And the King of Swords is showing here that there's sort of like an, a high level of clarity or understanding. Um, at the center of the reading, we also have the Six of Swords, which is about moving on. Now, everything is in reverse, and I do read reversals but I'm trying to understand more about why everything is in, is reversed and um, maybe it'll help for now to not read the reversals and just give you the energies. There is something about wanting to have control over or, you know, the emperor, that's Aries. Um, North Node just moved into Aries. There's this desire for enlightenment and knowledge that's definitely showing up here. There's like, there's a profound desire to understand something. What is it? Why does it feel like there's, I mean, Six of Cups is in reverse. Six of Cups is the energy of thinking about the past or the past coming into play here somehow this is nostalgia this is also about our childlike nature so i see leo here a little bit 
This is about potentially wanting to go back to a time when, um, or not wanting to go back necessarily, but thinking about a time, feeling in a way when we were in the past, feeling playful and more in our childlike wonder about things, something about that has had felt more authentic for you. Something about that. And then in the present moment, there needed to be some sort of balance between, I guess, the what feels like here, this, this desire for knowledge and understanding. I can also translate it as like the harsh realities of the world, if that makes sense. Um, this In the past position, the cards here, the Emperor, the Six of Cups, and the Knight of Cups, it's almost like we felt really good and in our you know in our center in our in our heart center when things were taken care of for us i think this is pointing to childhood and then what changed when we came into adulthood when we became responsible that's the king of swords right responsibility queen of pentacles also here represents nurturing you know having to nurture some sort of physical element time comforts uh, a stepping into, um, you know, in, in some ways this also can feel like, remember we were talking about habits, there's maybe some bad habits here that we're not willing to let go that we've had for a very long time, maybe since we were young or just um, from the past. Maybe it was because it gave you a sense of control. Um... This kind of feels like the, like the evil that you know. But it's not, you know, this is all in reverse because this is this whole story, what's showing here, is what's getting washed away. This idea that if I hold back this moment of, this period of discomfort will pass. This moment, this area of, um, what's another word for discomfort in this sense? It's saying fear. This moment of fear will pass. Um, we are, or, you know, it is showing in the present moment that whatever you had been doing to cope was because you needed to feel some sense of comfort feel some sort of balance, but it's also keeping you from moving forward. So where's the balance between initiative and control, right? And those are two different things, but I'm using them synonymously here. What helps you feel in control and moves you forward? There is a level of not knowing that has been true for what feels like a long time. And... There may not be clarity still yet. It's showing that that is what you want. You want to understand something that cannot be understood. How is that keeping you from moving forward? How is that keeping you in this place of almost too comfortable? Um, the comfort of fear. This reminds me of a card from another deck of... Um, of the ghost there's a there's a cool really cool animal northern animal tarot deck I still have one of those um, to do as a giveaway I just have no idea how to do a giveaway yet if you're interested in that you can let me know but anyway in this deck there are shadow cards and one of the shadow cards is the ghost and the ghost represents what stories are you telling yourself so that you stay comfortably scared Whatever that is, I feel like that paradigm that you have established for yourself for some time is going to get blasted. You're going to feel the feels. You will be confronted with that which no longer serves you. You may feel anger or resentment or, you know, have want to blame somebody else for it. 
just, and it, this is something I say a lot on my channel, is like this idea that other people are mirrors for us. What you see in them is in you. And for me, that speaks to, you know, I, I don't want it to get to the point, or I don't want you to understand that as like, oh, I'm, Grace is gaslighting herself and thinking that, you know, we need to keep working on ourselves because other people are um, simply and only reflections of us. No, people are their own, other people are their own thing. The world is not a projection or a hologram, except it is. That's a different discussion topic. I kind of, I say those things as, for me, as a way to enter into the space of desire for change and seeing our responsibility to ourselves to hold ourselves accountable to the life that we are in. The life that we are leading for, for our circumstances. You know, to any scale or degree. It's like how people say, you see good in the world, you will see more good. If you see bad in the world, you will see more bad. Self-fulfilling prophecies. I think you are going to see just how you have been self-sabotaging yourself from getting what you want. This is um, about how your subconscious is working to keep you comfortably scared. Please tell me what it is that shows up for you this week. Maybe write yourself a journal prompt at the top of a page in your journal to return to a week from now or two weeks from now. Let's do two weeks from now because that will be the next lunation, the full moon. And maybe at that time you'll want, you know, if, if this clarity comes to you, and it will, something will come, you can use that full moon to release that. If you want to do a full moon release ritual with me, I'm going to ask you again to just leave it in the comments below. Let me know or hit me up on Instagram because I am at the intuitive lens. Well, at the dot intuitive dot lens um, on Instagram. Sign up for emails from me if you want to hear more about that. I haven't done a full moon burn ceremony or release ritual in a little while, but I will do it if you want to do it. That's the thing, okay? So thanks so much for being here, for watching these videos. Thank you for appreciating astrology as much as I do, or maybe not as much as I do, but in your own way. If you have questions, let me know. And I can't wait to see you on the next video.